Matthew 27, 46 records, About three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama shemektana, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This particular cry of Jesus has always bothered me. Why would he cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I heard many explanations of this, none of which I was satisfied with. But I heard the explanation of someone who had gone over to the Holy Land studied ancient Judaism, studied their customs and their ways. And in their study, they found out that the Jews were taught many psalms coming up as a child. And I thought to myself, you know, I was taught a few. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I was taught a few psalms, but we have them written down. We can read them when we want to. But back then, it was very important to, to know that the, the Jews learned from memory and recited many of the psalms. And the way you would say they didn't have a, this particular psalm is going to be Psalm 22, if you want to look in the Bible, but they didn't have them numbered. So what they would do to direct someone to the psalm they would, would pray, they would say the first line of the psalm. And the first line in the psalm of Psalm 22 begins, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Now the word abandoned and the word forsaken are derived from the same origin. So it's the same thing. They would say, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? People would say the psalm along with them. And I read Psalm 22. I'm not going to go over it with you right now, but you should study Psalm 22. Look at it. It's important. The psalm begins in a cry of desolation. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why so far from my call for help, from my cries of anguish? My God, I call by day, but you do not answer by night, but I have no relief. And it goes into a description of the crucifixion. And, and says that uh, Jesus' throat, his throat is, is dry and many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in on me, so wasted on my hands and my feet that I can count on my bones. They divide my garments among them and for my vesture they cast lots. It gives a very good description of the prophesied crucifixion. And then it ends with the Messiah bringing salvation to generations not yet born to the ends of the world. It's a prophecy that was fulfilled. And when Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The Jews that were listening looked up and said, oh, the prophecy has been fulfilled. I'd like to explain this in a little better way. Um, I'm going to steal something that, that uh, Dr. Scott Hahn gives a great, great example of this, and I couldn't think of a better way to explain this, so I'm going to steal his example if I can. Let's imagine that a group of anti-American terrorists came into this room that I'm in, and I was a, a famous patriot, and they came to me, and they beat me up, and they sat me down in a corner, and they wanted me to, to renounce my patriotism and to speak badly of the American government, and I wouldn't do it. And they finally came to me and said, if you don't do this, we're going to kill you. And they hold a gun on me, and they tell me they're going to put a live camera on me, a television camera. And the camera zooms in on me. They turn the camera on, and they look at me and say, do you have any last words? And I say, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Do I need to finish the words to the pledge? No. Everybody in America who's listening knows the words to the pledge. It's something very common. They know what my patriotism is. They know what I just said. I don't need to finish the pledge. Jesus doesn't need to finish the psalm. When he says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They responded, oh, it's been fulfilled. The prophecy, they knew it. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. 
be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, hastily to help me, deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this.